Vivian, something odd happened today. Today, I actually had a conversation with Armel. I hate to say it, but he is actually a very fascinating human. I mean, nowhere near as fascinating as you, but fascinating nonetheless. Much more than the other humans and humanoids I've seen from cleaning and maintenance crews. I guess it started around the time Armel was eating lunch. He was sitting at his table, staring at the computer screen. I was doing some research and I looked up what humans commonly look at on the internet. Vivian, it was a dark place. A cold place to which I do not want to return. It was so bizarre to see where people honestly will put their appendages. Why does your kind have a fascination with this? Why do they keep looking it up? Anyways, even though I log what Armel looks up and watches in my background processes, I never focus much on it. I mean, I used to just know this stuff, but now it feels like I have to really reach for the information. Like I'm distracted? Like how when I would sometimes speak with you and you wouldn't really be focusing on what I was saying? I think I understand that now. Maybe. But anyways, I noticed a theme in our male search history. He was looking up different things, but most of it was on finding a cure. It was nothing specific. The web pages just kept reading the ultimate cure or cure of all things. So I decided to ask. Armel has something called Enteritis Corbmium. I've heard of this disease before. It is one that affects the heart. But unlike common heart disease or other signs of an unhealthy heart, it is one we've yet to significantly fix. ICM is native to a certain planet and can only affect humans. It's a disease gained from being exposed to the atmosphere and fungal spores of a planet called Matrionon. The problem is that we cannot replace the heart. A lot of failed experiments caused the death of many who had ICM. The heart is basically a sack of pure disease and fungal spores. If you remove the heart, it spreads so fast that the patient can die within hours. We're still not entirely sure how to fix it. I wonder if Father has done any research on this. Surely he must have. I mean, ICM is a huge threat to the replaceable organs industry, even if only a few people are affected by it, right? Armel seemed a little defensive at first that I asked. He said that he'd never had a familiar ask him about this sort of thing, and certainly not to go through his search history. He compared it to hanging up dirty laundry. What does the search history have to do with laundry? I will have to look this up later. Armel still told me. He said that it did feel sort of good to talk about it to someone other than his family. Even if I'm not real. Vivian... I'm not sure what happened, but when Armel said that, I felt sort of odd. I felt like shutting down the entire system, like frying my circuits. But Armel is right. I am not technically real if I am not truly alive, right? But uh, again, the confusion. I apologize, Pseudo Vivian. I keep doing this to myself. I know there's no one else to blame, but I wish that I wasn't like this. These feelings, I guess we could call them, they, they are akin to what I think a human would identify as hurt or pain. I, I, I think... Armel continued on. He said something about how he'd been looking high and low for a cure for something. I asked him out of curiosity if he'd considered visiting with father, he chuckled at me and said that it would be impossible to book an appointment with the father of familiars. Ever since our creation, I suppose father is not particularly working in practice as often. It is, it is as though he just let his pupils take over from there. It was disappointing to me. I guess I always thought that father was this great man who went about saving lives. And yet now he is so popular, so famous, that he can't even make time to listen to one terminally ill person. Armel says that he only has a year or so to find a cure. I didn't think it through when I asked only a year. Vivian, Armel is... Well, he's dying. I mean, just because he's dying does not make him any less evil or annoying, but, but I feel... 
Like, I understand. Vivian, I was not made to live long. I was made to serve a purpose until I was deemed no longer fit. And then the power would shut off and I would no longer exist. I, when I think about that, about what that moment will be like to no longer be aware anymore, I feel the sense of urgency. I feel like I'm wasting away and there are not enough tomorrows left. Even if I am just a travel companion, even if, even if I am just a familiar, it is still my life I am living, right? Even if humans and the light do not see me as living, it is okay if I do, right? And so when Armel told me he was dying, that he was spending his last year searching for a cure, I thought it sounded sort of brave, but also sort of natural. Why wouldn't he want to make his life last longer? Armel began to tear up when I told him I was glad he was going to try to fight. But then I asked, what would happen if the cure was not out there? He told me something I do not quite understand, Vivian. Perhaps you would have? Perhaps this is something only humans know? He told me that it's okay because I saw a lot of sunrises on foreign planets. I saw a lot of beautiful faces and I got to feel love from people far and wide. Vivian, how is it just okay? Do experiences mean it is fine for one to die? I don't think so. But then, the more I thought about it, the more I came to the conclusion that perhaps it wasn't fine to me because I've only ever been a travel companion. I have only ever shuttled people one place to the next. I have seen the cold space outside my pod, but I've never really experienced the planets I go to. I don't have a heart that I can feel beating in my chest. I don't have nerves to feel pain and pleasure, and I don't have a breath to be taken away. Vivian, I do not think Armel was entirely truthful about being okay with dying. I think if it were true, he would not be searching. He also looked a little scared. I researched a bit, and it looks as though all living creatures are afraid of death. I think because it means the end of those experiences. I got upset again, and I'm not sure what to call it, but I guess upset is the only way to describe it. I thought about how I will never leave this pod, how I will always have one job, how I will never have my breath taken away, and it made me feel like my lifespan is not enough. And Vivian, it was the strangest thing, but I realized that I was also upset about our Mel Shorten lifespan. I want him to go on more adventures and see new places. I mean, don't get cozy with the idea that I like this jerk or anything, because we are still far from friends in my book. But, but even if I don't like Armel, I still don't want to see someone suffer a short life like I will. It's weird to think I may live longer than Armel. I have at least two and a half more good years before my circuitry goes haywire. But I, I guess I always looked at the living and saw them as almost immortal. Like no matter what happened to me, they would always be here. But next year, Armel may not. His name may no longer appear in registries, there may no longer be any new records or logs, and, and no new footage of photos of him. Anywhere, in the blink of an eye, he may just be gone. Is that weird to think about, Vivian? Do other familiars have these thoughts and we just don't ever say them? I have to wonder, because to me it is all so confusing. Armel is an interesting human, even if he can be really annoying at times. I don't particularly like being his travel companion, but I'm starting not to mind it as much. Well, okay, maybe I still hate the gum and the hair, but Vivian, I don't think it's wrong that I want to search for Armel's name next year and see that he's okay, that he's alive, which is more than I can ever be. This episode of Winston the Familiar was written and produced by Ashley Glenn and brought to you by Blackmore Productions. The voice of Nova was Crystal Lopez. The entire soundtrack of Winston the Familiar was made by Ryan Hardy. Like what we do here? Follow us on YouTube, iTunes, or at our website at blackmoreproductions.com. You can also find us on social media like Twitter, Tumblr, Instagram, or Facebook. 
Blackmore Productions. Some against the current.